Now let's take a look into the Azure Monitor service. So Azure Monitor allows us to leverage the availability and performance of our applications and services, whether they're in the cloud or they're on site. It delivers an all-inclusive solution that allows us to collect, review, and react to our infrastructure needs from the cloud and our on-premise environments. So that allows us to have that insight that we can go from being reactive to actually being proactive with our environment and our services, and we can find issues before they actually affect the customer or our business. Some of the Azure Monitor tools that we can use with Azure Monitor, first of all, application insights. So we can detect and diagnose any issues across our applications and any dependencies with application insights. It gives us a real-time look into our live applications, and we can monitor and analyze any communications from mobile apps by integrating Visual Studio App Center. We can also drill into our monitoring data with log analytics, so if we have something we want to troubleshoot or do deep diagnostics on, we can drill down using log analytics from the log files of that service. We can incorporate smart alerts and automated actions. So that gives us flexibility and elasticity because we can create smart alerts and then we can program some automated actions to scale up or scale down based upon those alerts. And we have dashboards and workbooks, so we can view everything visually using the Azure dashboards and workbooks. There's also a few other tools we should discuss. First of one being VM Insights and Container Insights. So Azure gives you a little bit of a head start by offering insights. It's a pre-prepared queries and visualizations, and it also has workbooks that gives you deeper insights into your data, and it can help you if you're trying to debug or investigate an issue. And Azure Monitor Metrics. So metrics such as CPU utilization, disk input output per second, number of connections, these are all important. And because they're a measure of a resource's characteristics over a given period, they're typically in real time. And we can view that in a graph visually to see CPU utilization over time or the number of connections over time. And it gives us that additional insight that we need. Azure Monitor for Storage. So Azure Monitor for Storage provides comprehensive monitoring of your Azure Storage accounts by delivering a unified view of your Azure Storage services, availability, capacity, and performance. So we can look at the availability of our storage accounts, the capacity of our storage accounts, and the performance of our storage accounts. We can do that right in to each individual storage account, but if we use Azure Monitor, we can see it across groups of aggregated storage accounts. So it's a one-stop shop. You can look and view everything in one place. Azure Monitor for Storage has some features that we need to look at, whether if we use the storage feature from the storage account or in Azure Monitor, it does present a consistent experience all around. So it delivers at scale perspective. We get a snapshot view of the availability of our storage account based on the health of the storage service. It'll show us the utilization, that could be the number of requests that the storage service receives, or the latency values, right? So it shows us the time it takes to process requests. We can also do drill down analysis. So we can take a particular storage account, and if we want to diagnose any issues, or if there's something we want to look into further, we can do drill down analysis and get an in-depth view of the metric. And all this is customizable, right? So we can change what metrics we want to see, or we can change thresholds that work better for our needs, right? And we can save workbooks as our own, right? So it's not a cookie cutter approach, it's customizable. And there's no charge to access these features, right? You'll only be charged for the Azure Monitor essential features that you configure or enable. But the basic features, no charge. You can use this and really get a good insight into your organization and what may possibly go wrong down the road. It's all about being proactive as opposed to react. Azure Monitor for Storage Views. So from the Azure Monitor, we can view multiple storage accounts in our subscription, and that'll allow us to look at things like transactions, capacity, and latency. So if we're in the Azure Portal, we select Monitor from the left-hand pane in the Azure Portal, and under the Insights section, we select Storage Accounts. And we can view all these things, whether it's latency 
or capacity issues, and we can do it over a broad range of storage accounts, not just one at a time. Storage Workbook. So Azure offers monitor workbooks with your storage accounts, and you can use that to make decisions on your storage accounts or your services running in Azure. Monitoring these services are key. We need to know what's going on and we need to identify issues before they happen. Monitor service can use storage metrics, service availability, and up to five storage accounts are pre-selected. So all these tracing, we can look at all our storage metrics, we can look at all the availability, and we can do that over five storage accounts. If we select all of them, it can take up to 200 storage accounts. So be mindful of what you select in the scope selector. You don't want to include a bunch of storage accounts that you don't want to see. One important workbook is the capacity workbook. So this shows you the amount of total storage used in the account, any poorly utilized storage, and it gives you that all in a display format, and it helps you provide capacity for data services. So that capacity workbook is the workbook that you want to open to identify any capacity issues that you may foresee or may have happening to you. There are other storage workbooks as well. So depending on if you select availability or latency or errors, right, from the multiple storage account overview workbook, it'll open up different workbooks. So if you select availability from the overview workbook, it opens up the availability workbook. Again, this shows you your health state of your storage services with a table of all the available health state of each object. E2E latency or server latency, if you click that in the overview workbook, it opens up the performance workbook and that gives us insight on performance and latency and breaks down the latency of successful API calls. And if we choose errors or any error category from the overview workbook, it opens up the failures workbook. And from the failures workbook, we can see metric tiles of all the failed transactions such as throttling errors, um, and it'll give us a performance chart so we can look at and really dig into and look at what failed and why it failed. So there is a storage workbook to meet any of your needs. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to monitor your Azure Blob storage. So once we're inside the Microsoft Azure portal, go to your storage accounts and click the storage account that you want to look at and what storage account that you want to do some monitoring on. So I'm going to choose the Richard Spencer storage account. And then as usual, I'll hide the rest of the storage account so I can see this on my full screen. So if I open this up in Explorer, you can see here in Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer, I have all my storage accounts listed. I have my log storage, which we'll get to in a minute, and my Richard Spencer storage. So I'll minimize Azure Storage Explorer. And let's look at some of the monitoring aspects. So if you come down on your left-hand side, you'll see monitoring. So the first one we want to look at is metrics. So these are your metrics for your storage account. So if I want to see my used capacity, I can click the metric used capacity, and it'll give me a bar graph and also it'll give me a number. I can change this metric to a different metric, availability. Right? It's been available 100% of the time. I can also check and look at see, transactions, and I can see the transactions that occur. I can then drill into these logs further if there's a transaction I wish to investigate further. I can create a line chart, or I can create a new alert rule. So if I click new alert rule, this will allow us to configure an alert as a trigger, and that alert then will maybe scale out our resources, scale in our resources, Right, so this is all integral part of monitoring as well. So I'm going to go back. I'm not going to create the alert. You'll also see workbooks here. So here are some of the storage workbooks we talked about. Failures, performance. So if I want to look at the performance workbook, I can see my latency and my server latency. I can also see the bar graph and line chart. And I can open it up in Metrics Explorer and have another look at my latency. And again, I can do all the same things as I did before. I can drill into the logs. I can create new alert rules. I can create a line chart, or I can pin it to my dashboard. So I'm going to come back into my storage account and back under monitoring again. You'll see two. You'll see regular monitoring and you'll see classic. 
So these are the older versions of monitoring. Here are the newer versions. Right, so we have the insights that give us insights into our storage, transactions by storage type, transactions by API name. So it's some predefined queries that give us some insight into our storage. Alerts is where we can create our alerts. And then those alerts can let us know of any issues and we can scale out and scale in based upon those alerts. I can also change my scope. If I wanted to look at another storage account, for instance, I could do that as well. Workbooks, we mentioned, these are your predefined queries. Diagnostic settings are used for you to determine what type of diagnostics that you want to log in your storage account. And we will get to that in our next video directly after this one. And here's the logs. And you'll see it's preview. So this just means that it's a new feature. It's an updated feature. And we can look at all the logs or some updated queries here that are predefined for us. So we can run queries on operations that are causing server-side throttling, any errors, any performance, and it's built in. And then finally, you have some advisor recommendations. So it tells you, you know, this is what we recommend. This is the impact of these recommendations. And here's the number of resources that are impact. So the Azure monitoring for storage accounts really gives you some insight on things that you should do better. Um, any badly utilized storage space give you insights on performance, failures and errors and create alert. So it's really your go to tool to get a good insight into your storage accounts and to be proactive instead of reactive. In this video, I'm going to show you how to access diagnostic logs to monitor your data lake storage Gen 2 account. So the first thing you want to do when you're in the Microsoft Azure console is to come into your storage account. You can search for it up here or it can be in your most recently used toolbar. So once I'm in, I look at my storage accounts. Richard Spencer is the one that I want to configure diagnostics for. So I'm going to collapse the left-hand side so I can get a better view of my storage account. And down on the left-hand side, under the Azure monitoring section, you'll see diagnostic settings. So this is in preview mode, so it's a, a new feature. So let's go ahead and click diagnostic settings and you'll be brought into the Diagnostic Settings Console. So here's where you can select your resources and you can enable diagnostic statistics to be sent to multiple locations. And I'll show you that right now. I want to monitor my blob storage. So under my storage account, I'm going to go and click the blob storage and it brings me into my diagnostic settings for the blob storage. So these diagnostic settings are used to configure streaming of logs and metrics for the resource to a specific destination, whether it's a, another storage account, whether it's a log analytics service, right? We can take these logs and we can export them somewhere. So I'm going to click Add Diagnostic Setting. And here, the first thing I need to do is give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Diagnostic RKS, just so I can remember exactly what I used. In a real world case scenario, you probably want to use this naming convention to represent what you're trying to accomplish. So under category details, I can log storage reads. So any reads, any writes under storage write, any deletes under storage delete. I can also use metrics. So I can use the transaction metrics. So I'm going to log storage read, storage write, storage delete, and transaction. So now I have to decide where I want to send these logs. Do I want to send it to a log analytics workspace? If I have one, I can send it there. I can stream it to an event hub. So if I had an event hub namespace, we can send it there. And the beauty of this is that we're sending all of our logs to one unified place. So we don't have to go around looking for it. In my case, I'm going to archive them to a storage account. So you need to have another storage account in the same location. So in this case, I have a storage account called Log Storage RKS. So I'm going to archive all these logs to this storage account. I'm going to click Save. You'll see that it's updating the diagnostics. And now it's done. So if I come back under Diagnostics again on the left-hand side, 
and then I come back to my resource group. We'll see now that Richard Spencer blob is now enabled. So we've just enabled it. We're sending these logs to another storage account. Now it's time to test with Azure Storage Explorer. So I open Azure Storage Explorer. It brings me up and now you can see my storage accounts. These are the two storage accounts. Richard Spencer, which is a storage account we configured logging on, and the Log Storage RKS, where we configured the logs to go to. So let me upload a file in my blob container. If I click Upload and I upload a file, I can upload any file. I'm just going to take a RDP file, click Upload. So this should trigger a log, right, because we are writing to the database. If I were to read from the storage account, like I'm doing now, this is a log file that I put up a couple days ago. This should also trigger a log because I'm reading. So now that we've wrote and read to the database, let's check out the other storage account and check out the logs that were generated. So I'm going to collapse the Richard Spencer storage account. I'm going to go into my log storage. Under blob containers, you'll see insights logs storage read. Insights Log Storage Write, and Insight Metrics. Remember, we chose to log reads, writes, and metrics. So these are the blob containers that hold these log files. So let's open up Insight Logs Storage Write. And you've got to do a little bit of drilling down. So we drill down by resource ID, then subscriptions, then the name, then the resource group. And we keep going until we find storage accounts the storage account name that we are logging, blob services, default, and now you get into breaking it down by year, month, and day. So year is 2021, the month is April, and the day is the 15th in this case. So I do see a log entry for the file that we just uploaded. So I'll double click the 15th. Now it's broken down by hour, minute, and you get your JSON log file. So this is the log file that should show our administrative write to that database. So if I double click the log file to read it, once it opens, we should see that, in fact, it was richardspencer.blob and it was the default.rdp. So it shows me indeed it was that file I uploaded, the protocol I used, my IP address, my client request ID. So everything about that upload is stored in this log file. And that's the beauty of being able to put it there and being sorted by day and time. It makes it much easier to drill down and find. Anything for storage read would be there as well. So we'd have to go through and do the same drill down for storage read. Once we find the storage account and go into blob services, then we break it down by year, month, and day. You can see on the 15th, which is today, I open it up and here's my read JSON file. This read JSON file, once it opens, shows me what I did. So I listed the containers. I read the file in the blob account, right? We did a storage read from this location, has my IP address. So this shows you everything that you need to know. So I hope this video showed you how to set up diagnostic logs for your storage accounts and how to view them in another storage account where you archive them. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to monitor the Azure Synapse Analytics jobs and the adaptive cache for your SQL pools. So once you're in Microsoft Azure, I want you to come into monitor. So find the Azure monitor, whether it's here or you have to search for it in the above search bar. Go ahead and click monitor and you'll be brought into your Azure monitor. So let's come down to the left hand side where you see metrics and let's go ahead and click metrics. So we want to take a look at our cache settings. So the first thing we need to do is select our scope. So what is our scope going to be? In this case, it's going to be a SQL pool or SQL database. So once my scopes load, I come down, I find the SQL database that I want to look at the cache, and I go ahead and select it. So that's my scope. So I click apply. 
now my scope is here. You'll see the metric namespace as SQL database standard metrics. Now, if you look at your metrics, you'll see the two metrics that we're really interested in. That's cash hit percentage. So how many times has the cash been hit? And cash use percentage, right? And these apply to data warehouses. So if I say cash hit percentage, you'll see it's 0%. And if I ask for a cash used percentage, you'll see it's up at 0.1184%. So very little, but you can see it in a line chart. You can change this to a bar chart if you wish, right? Or we can change it again to a scatter chart or a grid. So there's different options available to us to look at that cash. So I'm going to change it back to a line chart. And now I can look at my cash setting. So when do we want to use these really? Um, if you have a high cash use percentage, you're optimally using your cash, right? So there may be other areas that are slowing down your queries. If you have a low cash used percentage, it's likely that your query is running slow because of reasons unrelated to the cash. So troubleshoot other areas that may be slowing down your queries. If you have a high cash use percentage and a low cash hit percentage, then your current working data set can't fit into your cache. And that causes a low cash hit percentage due to physical reads. And if you have a low cash use percentage and a low cash hit percentage, you have a cold cache. And that could be the reason why your query was slow. So consider rerunning your query. So just these two metrics alone, if I come back and look at that metric again, these two metrics alone, cash hit percentage and cash use percentage, can give you some insight on your cash. Right? So is it a combination of high cash hit percentage and high cash use percentage? Or is it high cash hit percentage and low cash use percentage? Regardless of what that case is, you can find it here and you can figure out, you know, is my issue with a cash or is my issue with a query? Once we're in here, we can drill into logs and get a little bit more information. So I can look at the activity logs. I can look at the SQL performance. So if I go ahead and click activity logs, you'll see all the activity logs that are occurring on that SQL database. I can come back to monitor again. I can create a new alert rule. So I can create an alert rule that says whenever the max cache use percentage is greater than, and then I'd have to put my condition in. So in this case, I could say if it's greater than 5%, right? I want to know about it. And I would like to have a text message or an email to let me know that, hey, you are reaching your maximum cash use percentage. So I hope this video showed you how to monitor your cash and what options to take depending on those cash hit and use percentage results. So get in, find your cash settings and metrics, pull back some information and see if there's anywhere that you can improve the performance in your data warehouse. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to monitor the Azure Cosmos DB. So once we're in our Azure portal, we can search for Cosmos in the search bar and we can find Azure Cosmos DB. We can go ahead and click it and be brought to the Cosmos DB portal. Inside the portal, you'll see all the Cosmos DBs that you've created. I want to monitor my Cosmos DB29381, so I'm going to go ahead and click that Cosmos DB instance. I'll collapse my left-hand side so I can see the full Cosmos DB console. So what we're interested from a monitoring perspective is on the left-hand side under monitoring, you'll see the Azure monitor options. So we've got things like insights. I can click on insights and that gives us insights, actual total requests, throttled requests, RU consumptions, data usage and index usage. It also gives us workbooks. So we can go into workbooks and we can drill down. So if we want to look at resource insights, we can go ahead and click resource insights much like the previous page we saw. But the beauty of workbooks here is that there's an empty workbook and we can create a workbook with just the information in it that we want to see. After the insights, we've got alerts. So 
we can get alerts just like we created alerts for other resources we can create alerts for cosmos db so i can click new alert rule my scope is cosmos db and then there's conditions here so what signal type i can have metrics again or i can have activity log so if i choose metrics there are specific metrics for cosmos db that i can create alerts on so if i wanted to create an alert for data usage I can create alert for data usage and I can say if data usage is greater than 100 gigabytes I want to know about it and that would be my alert and then I can create whatever actions that I want to create whether that's an email or a text message whatever the case may be I can create my alert rules I'm going to go ahead and cancel this so I'm going to come back to my Cosmos DB I'm going to leave so I won't save that alarm and then we're going to look at metrics so under metrics for Cosmos DB you'll see your scope as a Cosmos DB you'll see your metric namespace so we want to look at Cosmos DB standard metrics and under metrics you'll see metrics like available storage but these are deprecated so these are old but you want to use the newer ones so I can come down and look at things like Azure table created or I can take a look at some other metrics such as SQL database throughput updated or total requests right and I can see it in a graph format I can change this line chart to be an area chart a bar chart a scatter grid and I can also see it down here as a number under diagnostic settings here is where we can add diagnostic settings to send our logs to another destination whether it's a storage account which I'm doing here or an event hub or a log analytics workspace so you have to add your diagnostic setting and determine what do you want to log so data plane requests Mongo requests query runtime stats these are all your log areas and there's also metrics like requests so in my previous example I copied all of these and I send them to a log archive and that log archive was a storage account so it's all there and I'm logging it all. Under logs, you'll see where you can run some predefined queries on your logs. Now it must be noted that logs must be enabled in diagnostic settings before you can start and come and run some of these predefined queries. And then we have workbooks again. So we can get into workbooks from insights, right? Much the same. But really, Insights is built off this Azure Cosmos DB resource workbook. So that's how we monitor our Azure Cosmos DB, whether we use the Insights and the workbooks, metrics and alerts, or diagnostic settings and logs. There's plenty of ways using Azure Monitor that we can dive into our Cosmos DB and see exactly what's going on behind the scenes. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure, manage, and view metric alerts using the Azure Monitor. So once you're in the Azure portal, type in Monitor in the search bar and that should bring us to the Azure Monitor. Click the Azure Monitor icon and you're brought into the Azure Monitor console. So on the left hand side, you'll see Alerts. Click Alerts. This is where we're going to configure and manage and view these alerts. So as you can see, we have no alert rules. So let's go ahead and click plus to create a new alert rule. So I click create new alert rule and I'm brought into a page where I have to specify the scope, the conditions and the actions and any other details. So the first thing I need to do is select my scope. So click select resource. You'll get a pop up on the right hand side. You can filter by subscription. You can filter by resource type. I'm just going to say all. You can also filter by location. So I'm going to go and I'm going to choose a storage account. And I'm going to choose the Richard Spencer storage account as my resource. So I click done. My scope has been selected. Now I need a condition. So what should the trigger be, right? What type of signal? So I click add condition and under signal type, you'll see metrics and activity locks we want metrics we're going to use metric alerts for this example so go ahead and click metrics 
and you'll see your signal name. These are all metrics, availability, egress, ingress, success latency, server latency, transactions, and used capacity. So I'm going to click the used capacity signal, and it's going to give me a chart period. So over the last six hours, I've used 50.29 megabytes. I can expand that over the last week, right? And it doesn't change much. So that's fine. I want to know when my used capacity reaches five gigabytes. So I'm going to set a static threshold to say that the operator, in this case, used capacity, is greater than, on average, five, and I'll change the unit to gigabytes. So now if my used capacity is greater than five gigabytes, that should kick off my alert. I want it aggregated over an hour period, and I want it evaluated every minute. So I'm going to go ahead and click Done. I've got my scope. I've got my condition. Now what action do I want to do? So if I click Add Action Groups, I can create an action group, and I can have up to five action groups to this alert. So I click Create Action Group. I pick my subscription and my resource group, and now I give it a name. So I'm going to call it Storage Account Usage AG for Access Group, and then it takes the first 12 characters as the display name. So under Notifications, I want a notification of an email, and you'll see it pops up on the right-hand side here. You can add email, SMS, push notifications, or voice call. I'm going to say Email. And I want to send it to my personal email. And I'll click OK. And now you'll see that it is selected. I have to give it a name. We'll call it Send to Richard. Now I click Next. So here's the actions. I can configure actions here, right? I can run functions. I can have a webhook execute. Um, in this case, we're just going to leave it alone. I just want to know when my storage gets above five gigabytes. So I can apply any tags, click Review and Create. Everything looks fine. Click Create, and it's successfully created. So now you'll see that my storage account is the scope. My condition is that if the average capacity is greater than 5 gigabytes, send the action to this notification group, and that has one email. So now I just have to give it a name. So I'll call it Storage Usage Alarm. Any description I want to add, I can save the alert rule to this resource group and then severity, right? So depending on how I set it, I can set it as a warning, right? So I click create alert rule. The alert is being created and it's been successfully created. So now I come back, you'll see I have no alert. So all is good. It gives you that peace of mind right from the beginning. And you can manage your alert rules. So it shows you how many you have, and it gives you a link to click and manage. So I'll manage alert rules. You'll see the alarm that we just created. So if I want to make any changes to that, whether it's change the actions, change the recipients, I can do all of that here. So I hope this video showed you how to go in, configure, manage, and view your metric alerts using the Azure Monitor. Now let's discuss Azure Log Analytics. So the Azure Log Analytics will collect data from Windows and Linux VMs, whether they're in the cloud or they're on-premise machines or those monitored by System Center Operations Manager. It sends your collected data to Log Analytics in Azure Monitor, and from there you get visual representations of your logs and you can dig in and drill down and look at a little bit more information of what's actually happening on these Windows devices and Linux VMs. Log Analytics Insights. So the Log Analytics agent also supports insights, and it allows for insights into other services such as VM Insights, Azure Automation, and Azure Security Center. So this is possible because the agent is being used. The agent that we put on Linux and Windows VMs is not only used for connecting to Azure Monitor. Other services like the Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel also rely on this same agent, and it's also connected to the Log Analytics workspace. Log Analytics data types. So what type of data is collected with Log Analytics? 
first we can look at Windows event log. So any information sent to Windows event logging system, right, that we would normally look at with the Windows event viewer can also be looked at and used with log analytics. Syslog, so any information sent to the Linux event logging system, which is called the Syslog service, will also be processed using log analytics. IIS logs, so any logs for internet information services for your Windows web server can also be extracted and collected using log analytics as well. And performance characteristics, so VM performance of your Windows machine, of your Linux machine, this can also be collected and sent back to log analytics. And finally, custom logs. So if we're running custom applications, custom applications are going to have custom logs. So with that being said, log analytics also collects that data for you as well. So you get that one unified place to view all your logs and drill down. Log analytics and operating systems. So where do our data go? Right? What are the data destinations? So the log analytics agents will send data to a log analytics workspace in Azure Monitor. The Windows agent can be configured to send data to multiple workspaces, and it can also send it to System Center Operation Manager Management Group. So it's a good tie in there. The Linux agent can only send to one destination, so a workspace or a management group. There are some limitations to workspace and management groups. Windows agents can connect up to four workspaces, even if they're connected to a system center operations manager. And the Linux agent do not support multi-homing and can only connect to a single workspace or a single management group. And security. So there's some security limitations. The Windows and Linux agents support the FIPS 140 standard, but other types of hardening may not be supported. So check your compliance needs before you dig into it, because if there may be issues that there are certain types of hardening that you need to do with log analytics and it's not possible and it may not be a fit for you. So double check your compliance. So how do we install this log analytics agent and connect our machine to Azure Monitor? There are quite a few options depending on what you're trying to install it on. So an Azure virtual machine. An Azure Virtual Machine VM Insights will provide multiple methods enabling agents at scale. This includes installation of the log analytics agents and the dependency agent. Windows VMs, whether they're on premise or in another cloud, you can manually install the agent from the command line. You can use Azure Arc enabled servers to deploy and manage the log analytics VM extension. You can automate the installation with Azure Automation or use a resource manager template with an Azure stack. And Linux VMs. So again, you can use Azure Arc enabled servers to deploy and manage that log analytics VM extension. You can manually install the agent calling a wrapper script hosted on GitHub, or you can integrate it with System Center Operations Manager. So there's multiple different ways depending on what you're trying to put the agent on to actually go about the agent installation. Some other considerations we need to look at. So first of all being workspace ID and key. So regardless of how you install the agent, you're going to need the workspace ID and the key for the workspace that the agent will connect to. So you need to select the workspace from the log analytics workspaces menu and then select agents management in the settings section. And that gives you all the settings that you need to connect your agents. There's network requirements. So we need to communicate over port 443. If the machine connects through a firewall or a proxy server, you need to make sure that those ports are open so the Azure monitor service can communicate over that secure port. The TLS 1.2 protocol. So to make sure that data is secure in transit, Azure monitor logs, strongly encourage you to configure the agent to use at least TLS 1.2, right? Nothing older than that have been really found to be effective. There are vulnerabilities in older versions of TLS. And firewall requirements. So you're going to need to make some firewall changes to allow communications for Azure monitor logs. You need to open port 443 outbound, right? We need to bypass HTTPS inspection and we need to direct the traffic to the right places. So your firewall requirements will need to be updated and some changes will need to be made. And finally, proxy configuration. So the Windows and Linux agent 
supports communicating either through a proxy server or Log Analytics Gateway to Azure Monitor using that HTTPS protocol, port 443, as we mentioned earlier. Both anonymous and basic authentication are supported. So you've got multiple ways that you can connect. But remember, before you start to implement, to look through these considerations and make sure that everything is going to work for you and fit your goal for your organization and your environment. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure, manage, and view activity log alerts using the Azure Monitor. So once you're in the portal, you'll see a monitor on the top if you've recently used it. Otherwise, you can search for it in the search bar and you type in monitor and you can see the Azure monitor shows up. So we click the monitor to go into the monitor portal. And we're interested in creating activity log alert. So let's come under alerts and we wanna create a new alert rule. So we're gonna click plus to create the new alert rule. And much the same as alert rules for metrics, we have to create a scope, a condition, and any actions we want to take. So for a scope, I'm going to select a resource. I can filter by subscription. I can filter by resource type. I'll take all resources. And in this case, this time, I'm going to choose a SQL Server. So I'm going to choose Richard SQL Server as my resource, and I'll click Done. Now my condition. So here's the difference between creating metric alerts and activity log alerts. So click Add Condition. And under signal type, you'll see metrics and activity log. So in this case, we want to create an activity log alert. So click activity log. And underneath signal name, you'll see all the signal names that you can use. So unlike metrics, which is like transactions and utilization, we've got activity log. So do we want to be notified for all administrative operations? Just when people import a database into the server or if someone deletes a server? In this case, I'm going to choose all administrative options. And I'm going to look at them over the last week just to see what has been happening or if anything has been happening. So it's trying to pull the data over the last week to see what I've been doing. I haven't been doing anything with the database, so there's no data there to pull back. But again, I want all event levels, critical, error, warning, informational, verbose, and I want failed, started, succeed. And I want the event initiated by all services and users. So doesn't matter what service or user writes or communicates with this database. I want it to be logged and I want an alert generated from that. So I click done. Now we've got a condition whenever the activity log has an event with category equals administrative. And here's where we create action. So I can add an action group. I've got one previously for my storage account. So I can select any action groups here or I can create a new one. And under resource group and I give it a name, SQL Server Admin, click notification. So in this case, I can have a resource manager role notification or an email or an SMS push or voice. I can choose the manager role. Here's where we can select an Azure manager role. I can say owner, click OK. And I'll just use a name, call it notify owner. Click next. What actions do we want to take? Right. So I can again use webhooks. I can run functions. In this case, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to click review and create. And I'm going to create my action group. So it successfully created the action group. Now my rule has been created. I have to give it a name. So SQL Server Rule. And I click Create Rule. So now you can see the rule has been created, but we have no alert. So that's good news. So anytime now that someone does anything administrative with that SQL database, I will get an alert because I'm the owner of that database. So I hope this video showed you how to go in and create and manage these activity log alerts and how to differentiate between the activity log alerts and the metric alerts. So get in, create some of your alerts, and get more insight on what's actually going on with your resources in Microsoft Azure. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to monitor Azure Stream Analytics jobs. 
So once you're in the Microsoft Azure console, you want to find Stream Analytics jobs. If you haven't used it recently, you may have to search for it. So if I type in jobs, I get Stream Analytics jobs. So I'm going to click the Stream Analytics jobs to go into the console. And from here, I can see all my Stream Analytics jobs. So I'm using a Stream Analytics job. It's called Stream Gen 2. So I'm streaming it from my Gen 2 storage account. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one because it's the one I want to monitor. And I'm going to collapse the left hand side. So you'll see I've got two inputs into this Stream Analytics job, and they're both blob storage. So on the left hand side, we're interested in monitoring. So we have logs, metrics, alert rules and diagnostic setting. So the first thing we can take a look at is logs. These give us logs. Now, the thing about this is that logs must be enabled in the diagnostic settings. So I'm gonna close query, and I'm gonna come into diagnostic settings. Here's where we need to configure the export of our logs and metrics. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add diagnostic setting, and I want to log executions, authoring, and all metrics. I'm going to call this job log with a random number and I'm going to archive it to a storage account in my log storage RKS account. So I'm going to go ahead, click save, and it's updating my diagnostics. It's successfully updated. I can come back to my Stream Gen 2 now and now these logs, I can run these queries. So if I had any input data errors, right, these were just predefined queries that are based upon stream analytics jobs. Right, so you don't have to create the queries they are already created for you. So we can exit out of there and we can look at metrics. So metrics are the key indicators of how well our stream analytics job is performing. So under scope, we have to make sure we have our stream gen 2, our stream analytics job. And under the metric namespace, you'll see that selected as Stream Analytics Job Standard Metrics. So we can see all the metrics for Stream Analytics jobs, such as backlogged input events, CPU utilization, function events, function requests, input events, out of order events, runtime errors, SU percent utilization. These are all the metrics that we can use. If I choose CPU utilization, I haven't used any yet. I can also take a look at things like input events. I can take a look at output events. I can also aggregate that by some. So right now I don't have any input or output events as it's still in provisioning mode. But once this job got up and running and was daily importing or exporting data to other destinations or from other destinations, I could see all that under the metric itself. From here, I can do the usual stuff like change it from a line chart to an area chart or a bar chart. I can drill further into the logs or I can create a new alert rule to say whenever the max backlog input event is greater than. So for a rule, I select my scope. Then I select my condition. So in this case, the condition that I'm taking is backlog input events. I want to be notified when the backlog input events is greater than five. All right, so I click done. We get a nice green check mark. And now I can set any actions I want, like to email me if I wish. So I may have to create a new action group and give it a name. Then specify what type of notification. So I want an email. And I choose email here on the pop up. And I put my email in and I click OK. I have to give it a name. I'll call it email Richard and click review and create. So this action group has been created now and this alert rule is ready to be created. So whenever the maximum backlog events is greater than five, send me an email and I'm going to call it backlog alert. And it is a warning. So if I create alert rule, that alert rule will be created and now anytime that we get that max backlog input events greater than five, I'll be notified of. So I hope this video showed you how to get some insight on your stream analytics jobs so you can see how well they're performing. And again, always be proactive instead of reactive.
Now let's look at Azure Cosmos DB. So in Azure Cosmos DB, every property in our item is indexed by default. So it has indexing policies defined for each container. That's great for us as developers because we don't have to spend a bunch of time managing indexes. But there may be times where we want to customize the indexing policy depending on our workloads. This indexing policy allows us to do this. So they're defined for each container. The default indexing policy for newly created containers enforces range indexes for any string or number. But this policy can be overridden with your own custom indexing policy. Cosmos DB indexing mode. So Azure Cosmos DB supports two indexing modes. It supports consistent indexing modes. So the index is updated synchronously as you create, update, or delete items. So that's going to be consistency of your read queries will be strongly consistency because it's updated synchronously as you create or update and delete items. There's also what they call none. So indexing is disabled on the container. This is good if a container is just a key value store and it don't need any secondary indexes. It's used to improve the performance of bulk operations. And once the bulk operations are complete, the index mode can be set back to consistent if you want. So you can change them on the fly. Azure Cosmos DB also supports a lazy indexing mode. So lazy indexing performs updates to the index at a much lower priority level when the engine is not being used. Right, so changes to the index happen asynchronously using a background process. Index sizes in Cosmos DB. So the index size depends on the indexing policy. If all properties are indexes, the index is going to grow larger than the actual data size itself. So something to be wary for. The index size can temporarily grow when physical partitions are split. The index space is released after a partition split is completed. And when a data table is deleted, indexes are compacted. And this is done on a near continuous basis. That being said, for some small data deletions, you may not immediately observe a decrease in your index size. Cosmos DB supports three kinds of index types. The first is range indexes. These are great for ordering or doing range searches. So if you're searching a specific range for something, these are the indexes you want to use. Spatial indexes used for spatial queries. So within or like distance and composite indexes. So you can now use composite indexes to optimize additional cases of the most inefficient queries. So there's a lot of variety depending on the index type that you want to use. Range indexes are used for equality queries. So where something equals something, where car equals Ford, where food equals hamburger. Range indexes are great for range queries. So where something is greater than another value. So where money owed is greater than 500 or where payout is greater than 1000. These are your range queries. They're great for order by queries, join queries, and for checking the presence of a property. So where something is defined as a string or a number. We use range indexes on string or number values. Spatial indexes are used for geospatial objects. So that would be currently points or line strings or polygons. These are supported. We can use spatial indexes on GeoJSON objects. So if that's something that you need to use, um, you can take advantage of spatial indexes in Microsoft Azure now as well. And composite indexes. Composite indexes are used when we really need to increase query efficiency. And we have operations that are performing a little slower than we'd like. And they're probably really important operations. So this is where we need to use composite indexes. Composite indexes increase the efficiency on queries that perform operations on multiple fields. So if you have a slow or high request unit query, you want to use a composite index to optimize it. 
So in this course, we've examined the features of the Azure Monitor service. We did this by exploring, monitoring Azure Blob Storage and Data Lake Storage Gen 2, monitoring Azure Synapse Analytics and Cosmos DB, configuring Azure Monitoring Alerts and Azure Log Analytics, monitoring Azure Stream Analytics jobs, and we looked at Azure Cosmos DB indexing types. In our next course, we'll move on to discuss Azure Data Process Monitor.